Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I am Penge and welcome to day one of the Geek Cupboard's festive advent countdown 2021. So here we are again, we did this last year and it was a lot of fun to do, it was really really good so I thought do you know what, let's do it again this year. Now if you did see this last year then you will know what to expect but if not this is what the festive advent countdown is all about. So it's currently the 1st of December, Christmas is very much on the way and it's also the first day of advent and some people count down the days of advent with an advent calendar and nowadays there are many many different types of advent calendar some you know the more traditional ones have little kind of seasonal pictures in them others have chocolate they're very very common there are ones with gin and wine and whiskey in them i mean maybe open those at the end of the day there are others with gaming miniatures in there are lego advent calendars there are socks advent calendars but of course in the geek cupboard we are interested in the advent calendars that offer us a nice new type of tea to try each and every day and here it is, this year's advent calendar full of lovely, lovely tea. It's the Pucker calendar. That's what we're going for this year. And apparently it's filled with incredible organic tea, so it says, which sounds marvellous. So yes, each day we will open the appropriate door on the advent calendar, make ourselves a cup of the tea contained therein, and then we'll just sort of sit back, have some nice tea. No, we'll have some incredible tea, no less. And then we'll answer a question that was sent in by one of you lovely people out there. And once again, you sent in many, many good questions. You lovely people did not disappoint so thank you very much if you did leave a question i've gone through and picked out the ones which we will be answering but yes thank you very much if you did join in and that's kind of it that is kind of how this is going to work it's all very laid back and we'll just have a series of short little videos answering questions and drinking tea which all sounds very lovely now the good thing about this particular tea advent calendar is that every day we get a different tea now last year when we did this we had some repeats i think if memory serves correctly there were 13 different teas Christmas Day had its own special unique tea and the other 12 were supposed to appear twice but we had one of them that appeared three times and one that appeared once. I think. I think that's how it went. But apparently this calendar here has a different tea every single day, which is wonderful. So just before we begin, a big huge thanks to Steve, who quite a while back suggested this particular tea advent calendar to me. And he also indeed very kindly offered to buy it for me, but because I couldn't work out how he'd get it over to me, because you know, I haven't got a PO box or anything like that. In the end, I bought the calendar and Steve donated some money to Macmillan, which is a wonderful charity that takes care of people and families that are dealing with cancer. So a huge big giant gigantic thanks to Steve for the calendar suggestion and also the donation to Macmillan because that is also wonderful. So Steve, I raise a glass to you. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Hang on. Steve, I raise a glass to you. It's a mug and it's empty, but you get the idea. It's the thought that counts. I've raised a mug to you, Steve. There we go. Wonderful stuff. And if anybody else feels like donating to Macmillan, then there is a link in the video description. But of course, other charities are excellent too. Anyway, let's open this up, shall we? I've not even opened this yet. It did take a little bit of a knock on the side here during delivery. The side is a little bit kind of squished. I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera. If I put it actually under the camera, it might help. But that side is a little bit kind of, a little bit squished, but I think it should be fine. So here we go. Let's open this up. So this bit here, I think, I mean, do we just pull that up or do we rip that bit off? That looks like a, there's a perforated bit there, but I kind of feel like we should, do we need to rip this bit up? Oh no, now what if it all goes wrong? Hang on, hang on, right. Perforation, perforation looks like the way to go. My goodness, this is, this is very firmly stuck down. <laughs> I don't want anyone breaking into the tea. And there we go. Okay, here we go. This is exciting. This is exciting. This, is this an unboxing? It's sort of an unboxing. So here we go. Right. Okay, so it's opening up. Oh, okay, right. Okay, this is just an outer box. This is, oh, right. Oh, crikey, it's all foldy. It's all foldy. Uh, okay, right, hang on. That needs to go away. Let me just throw that behind me somewhere. Away, away with you. That just fell on my feet. Uh, okay, so here we go. Now I'm gonna have to try and get this in camera which is quite tricky to do, but there we go. So it's like a big, long, oh my goodness me. It is, it's a big, long kind of long tree, which I will not be able to fit on camera. So it starts kind of uh, there like that. And then it kind of goes all the way through <laughs> like this. But look at that. There are many, many different teas. Hang on a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, hang on, there must be another, oh, there's another bit. <laughs> there's a bit. There, we appear to be some days short. This thing is huge. It just, it just goes on for ages. So hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 24 different types of tea. This is wonderful. Right, where is number one? Because that would make sense. There it is. There it is. Number one, right in the middle. That's quite handy. It's right on the camera. Uh, number one is Pucker Feel New, a clean fusion of aniseed, fennel, and cardamom. Okay. 
Right, so I mean, do we do we lift that up and sort of peel that out from like that? Yeah, there we go. Herbs to help you feel like new for mornings after the night before. Okie doke. I mean, right, there's many, many interesting flavours here. Let's have a quick look through just while we're here. So we've got we've got today's one. That sounds nice, but let's just have a quick look through. We're not going to you know, sort of look in detail. Just a quick sort of a quick sort of exciting flavour of what might be coming up. I mean, lemon, ginger, and manuka honey. And I see that that sounds good. I like the sound of that. Um, a kind of a cleansing one, similar to one we've got now, I suppose, but slightly different. Um, ginseng matcha green. Got three ginger. I bet that's going to be quite nice. Um, we'll skip sort of this down here. And there's loads. <laughs> I can't believe how sort of huge this thing is. Um, and we've got blackcurrant beauty, wild apple and cinnamon. How intriguing. And then, yeah, revitalized nighttime. A dreamy bed of oat flour, lavender and lime flour. Okay. They sound interesting things. And then licorice and cinnamon. That could be interesting. Now, the thing about that, I'm not the biggest fan of licorice in the world. I'm not the hugest fan, but we'll see how that goes in terms of a tea. But um, right, here we go. So we have this, we have our lovely feel new tea. So I think there's only one thing that we need to do right now. We need to go to the kettle. And here we are with our lovely freshly brewed cup of Pucker Feel New Organic Decaffeinated Tea. There are many ways to describe this tea, but it looks very nice. It looks like a very lovely, clean, refreshing green tea. Now, in terms of the smell of the tea, I will try my best to describe what the tea smells like. However, since I had COVID back in August, if you can believe that, I can't really smell anything properly. My sense of smell has not returned properly quite yet. So anything subtle, no chance. I cannot smell anything subtle at all. Very, very strong smells I can smell if I'm relatively close to them. So hopefully this is a very, very strong smelling tea. And when I actually you know, put my nose to it and give it a good sniff, I will be able to actually smell something. So here we go. Let's give it a go, shall we? Let's try. So nope, not a thing. Not a thing. I'm sure it smells lovely. We'll say it smells lovely. It's a lovely, lovely smell of lovely, lovely things. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's aniseedy, apparently, this one, isn't it? Apparently, it's aniseedy. Hang on, I've got the thing just here. So, uh, yes, aniseed, fennel, and cardamom. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure it smells aniseedy. I just can't pick it up. I mean, okay, so, yeah, it looks okay. It might smell wonderful. It might smell terrible. I do not know. But really, it's all about the drinking of the tea, isn't it? So, let's have a little bit of tea and see how it tastes. Now, I can taste things, thankfully. That's very good. So, here we go. Let's taste some of the tea. That is very nice. Oh, I like that. Oh, it's got a little bit of a little bit of pep to it, but not too much. So yeah, you can definitely taste aniseed. You can taste aniseed very, very much. And that's okay. I like aniseed. Aniseed is okay. But it's got a little bit of, I assume, is that the cardamom possibly? Giving it a little bit of a, not hot like spice, just a little bit of, little bit of a, little bit of a pep there. Something a little bit, you know, you notice it. You know you've drunk some tea. It's got a little bit, tiny bit of fire there maybe. That's really nice. Hang on, I'm going to have some more. Hang on, that's nice. Oh yeah, that's very nice. Okay, right, that's very good. And, and I feel new all of a sudden. My goodness me, wonderful. Right, so there we go. So the tea is very nice. So now let's move on to the question bit, shall we? So today's question comes from Steve. So Steve got mentioned earlier. Steve sort of uh, pointed this very calendar out to me. And because, you know, he was very generous in his donation to Macmillan, all that kind of stuff, I said, you know what, Steve, you can have the very first question. So Steve sort of, I mean, he's he's very cleverly kind of got two questions in one. We'll let him off. It's fine. Um, so yeah, Steve's sort of first question uh, says, what made you decide to start a YouTube channel in the first place? Which is a good question. It's a very good question. Um, and it went back, it goes back quite a way. It goes back quite a way to something like 20, sort of 2013, 2014, I started watching Let's Play Things on YouTube. And I started watching Unstable Voltage, who is still around. So they played sort of strategy type games. And then I stumbled across, I mean, I probably watched a few others, but the ones that you know, I remember are Unstable Voltage and the wonderful and always brilliant Many a True Nerd. And um, I, so I watched them for a while and it was okay. I didn't watch loads, but yeah, I watched enough. And Many True Nerd, I watched various sort of, you know, Kill Everything runs and it was wonderful and funny. Um, and then, so here we go. I'm, I'm not going to try and make this into a downer. I'm not going to make this into a negative thing. We're going we're to look on the positive side. Um, so then my dad got ill. He got ill and he was diagnosed with cancer. And so we sort of dealt with it. And it was just me and my dad. Mum wasn't there and no brother, sister, whatever. So it was just me, me and dad dealing with it. And it was, yeah, it was looking all right. He had operations. He had bits of, he had sort of bowel cancer. He had bits of bowel removed and he had a kind of stoma back in and all that kind of stuff. And it was sort of, you know, it was looking positive. And then 
Let's Plays kind of propped me up during that because it was you know, it was a stressy time and I had to keep driving up to see him. He wasn't just, you know, two minutes down the road. He was a sort of, what, 45 minute drive away. So I kept him to go up and then take him to hospital and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I was sort of, you know, kind of a bit stressed out. I will be honest, a bit stressed out. So yeah, I watched Let's Play videos while I was waiting in the hospital for him to do various bits and bobs. And they, they kept me sort of, they kept me sane and grounded and leveled. Um, and anyway, and it was looking good. And then you know, things went, you know, took a turn for the worse. Dad unfortunately passed away. And then that kind of, you know, I, I again, turned to Let's Play videos. They again, kept me afloat. Not entirely, you know, friends and family and such like also kept me going. But they were sort of, they were there. They were a constant thing where I could just go, do you know what? Can't need to just escape from all the stuff. Let's just, let's just put something on. Let's just watch somebody sort of being silly in a game and I'll just detach myself from reality for a short while and watch that and have fun and have a laugh and it shall be brilliant. And that's what I did. That's why you know, so I watched them for those reasons. And then, you know, as time passed on, I sort of got on with stuff and started thinking, do you know what? Right, here we go. You know, it's got to get on with it. Got to crack on. And then I, I can't quite exactly recall the exact moment, but I kind of thought, do you know what? Looking at this, so looking at many a true nerd, for example, it's like he's playing games. I like playing games. I love playing games. And he's, you know, he's talking over them and he's talking nonsense over them. And I like talking nonsense. I could probably do this. I could play games and talk nonsense. Wouldn't that be fun? Then there you go. They've helped me out. Let's Play videos have helped me out a great, great deal. Um, so maybe if I do some, if I do a Let's Play video or two or whatever, maybe they could help someone else out. Maybe someone else might look and go, Joe, you know what? That was wonderful. I'm glad that person made that video because I was feeling terrible and now I don't feel quite so glum anymore. And it kind of just came from there. It came from there. It came from sort of this sort of feeling of, well, do you know what? Let's give it a go. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It, it's one of those things. Lovely bit of tea. That is very nice. I have to buy some more of that. That's lovely. Um, so yeah, so it came from that. And then it just sort of, it went from there. So I gave it, I gave it a go. There were some practice runs that are not there anymore. There was a practice. Um, was there two? There might have been two practice runs, but they weren't properly done or anything. But yeah, so I gave them a go and then thought, yeah, that'll do. That'll do. I'll, ju I'll just go now. I'll go now. And then of course we started in August, 2016 with, um, with Yes Man. And that was it. And then it went from there. But yeah, so really it was a case of sort of, you know, I used them as a bit of an escape. And then I thought, you know what? I can talk nonsense. I can play games. Let's combine the two and see if it works. And also it might help other people out. And that's kind of always been the goal. It sounds a little bit sort of <laughs> a little bit mushy, doesn't it? But it's always been the goal that in my head, it's a bit, if I can help, you know, if, if I help one person, if one person feels a little bit rubbish, if they feel a bit down or low or sad or whatever, lost, whatever, and they watch a geek or bit video, and it just, you know, it just brightens the world up for them. It just makes them smile or just takes their mind off all sorts of stuff just for a little while. And it helps them out the tiniest, tiniest bit. Then that's kind of job done. That's job done because I will have somehow helped somebody in the world somewhere. And you know, that's surely what it's all about, isn't it? That's what all this stuff is about. So that's kind of the idea. That's why we did this whole thing. That's why the YouTube channel began. And you know, we are where we are now. And then Steve sort of, Second question. It's clever. It's clever, Steve. Good job. Good double questioning. Um, so yeah, what made you decide to start a YouTube channel in the first place and what kept you going through the early days as you built your subscriber count? That is a very good question. Um, I think, I think I did have some quite measured expectations. I did not really think I was going to go in and, you know, after a week, and after three videos end up with, you know, five million subscribers and I'm going to be a millionaire and all that kind of stuff. I kind of knew that it wasn't going to be quick. It was just going to be a slow process. And at the start, I wasn't really sort of doing it for, I wasn't thinking, right, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make Fallout 4 Exposers only. It's going to be the best thing ever. And I'm going to have a million subscribers. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to be the best YouTuber. I kind of just thought, you know what? It's a fun challenge. I thought about doing Exposers only in Fallout 4, which was the first big kind of uh, the big series on the channel. Um, I thought about doing that for a while, sort of, you know, just off camera to myself. And I thought, well, why don't I just do it on a camera? That makes sense. So yeah, so it sort of, you know, I knew that that wasn't going to be massive and huge. It turned out to be quite big in, you know, in proportion to the size of the channel at the time. But um, but yeah, that it, it was kind of just measured expectations. Because there is that kind of thing when you, you know, if you start a YouTube channel, you do think, you know, think, oh, do you know what? I'm going to do these videos and they're going to be amazing and it's going to be wonderful. 
And then you, know, you realise that everyone else is doing it as well. Now, I will admit, I will admit, I did play, <laughs> I did play Outlast. I played Outlast, which we wouldn't play on the channel nowadays. It's kind of a terrifying horror psychology game. And I thought, I thought I was being so very clever playing Outlast. I thought, haha, nobody's played Outlast. I should play this horror game and it shall, it shall do well for me. And it didn't. It didn't do well because I didn't do any research on it at all. Because it turned out that everybody had played it. All the people had played Outlast. So, um, so yeah, it didn't really do very well for me. But that was kind of the only time where, where in the back of my mind, I thought, do you know what? This is going to do well. We're going to do this. It's going to, we're going to get loads of people on this. We're playing Outlast. Who has played this before? And of course, everyone had played it. PewDiePie had played it. You know, that was one of the things that made him kind of quite big, I think. So, so yeah, I think what got us going through the early days was, you know, support from, from family. You know, Mrs. Penge was very good with it, even though she didn't fully understand it. I don't, I don't know if she still does. But yeah, she was very good with it. And, um, and then, yeah, just understanding that it wasn't going to happen overnight. Very rarely does that happen. I think there are a few cases where maybe, you know, YouTube stardom has happened to people over the course of like a month or something. But for most folks, you know, it's, it's a long process. And I was aware of this. So yeah, just sort of having a, a measured view of things, a realistic sort of list of expectations. Maybe that comes with the grand old age I am. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, so that's kind of what kept me going. And there we go. There we go. So that is why we started the Geek Cupboard in the first place. And then what sort of kept the Geek Cupboard afloat in those very, very sort of early days, which is like five and a half years ago now. That's all a bit bonkers. It's all very silly indeed. But, uh, but there we go. There we go. I'm just going to have a bit of tea. Hang on. Excuse me. Oh, that, that, that is very nice. I'm, I'm impressed by how nice that is. It's really sort of clean and refreshing and it tastes, yeah, the aniseed is quite nice, but it, it's, yeah, it's just quite sort of clean and sharp and lovely. I do like that. That's, I mean, that set a very high benchmark, I will say, of the teas that we've had so far. Um, but yeah, there we go. That's kind of it. That is kind of it. That's what we do with the Festive Advent Countdown videos. We open the calendar, we get the tea out, we make the tea, we try the tea, and then we have a chat with a question. And that is kind of it. And, you know, I've kind of positioned the camera like this. So you can imagine that, you know, if you're over there or something, then you know, we could be having tea together. And that's a lovely thing. So I'd love to have tea with you all. That would be marvellous indeed. But but there we go. So I think with that done, we will finish things up for now. The first day of Advent has arrived. Tea's been made. Questions been answered. All wonderful stuff. So with that, I think we will wrap things up for now. So thank you very much for joining me for day one of the Festive Advent Countdown 2021. And I will see you next time. She's still heartbroken. <laughs> She's still sick. Oh, Colleen, you're, it, this is not your day, is it? Sean Bozzini is going to defecate. How's the lounge looking? <laughs> Do you like the plants? I left them there, especially for you guys. <laughs> Is there some sort of terrible apocalypse which I need to know about? He's just defecated in a bush. <laughs>